Ah, yes, another fine product from Sierra. Do, 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 do. Ding. Yeah, it's in there. Ding, do. Welcome to Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Father, in this very loud introduction. Ah, it's not that bad. <laughs> nah, not yet. Wait until the, uh... Wait. We get into the early 90s driving rock section that's coming up very shortly. <laughs> the drop, as they call it these days. Uh, yeah. As, as the kids are calling it. <laughs> yes. So this is, uh, obviously a Sierra game, as you saw, uh, released in 1993. Now, this is, in my opinion, one of the few Sierra games that's actually worth playing. Ouch. Yes. Ouch. Um... Uh, that's because this was actually done by Jane Jensen and not either Ken or Roberta Williams. So there will be no cheap deaths. Thankfully. Oh, here, here we go. This actually sounds more We're like really John get... Carpenter. <laughs> We're just really getting into it back there. I could let this run out, but I mean, this is easy enough to find elsewhere. It just sort of keeps going um, at this point. <laughs> but, I mean, it does get into kind of a cool little section where there's a, a couple of motifs that show up every now and again in, in the game, musically. Um, but, you know... <laughs> well, I talked long enough, here we are. <laughs> I have to say, the soundtrack's actually decent in this one. That's some nice jazz it is, it is very early 90s. Like, incredibly. Like, this is like Michael Bolton-esque early, or like late 80s, early 90s kind of thing. <laughs> like, do you not get that feel from this? I uh, know, I definitely do. I'm, I'm just laughing about it. Because, like, I'm like, yeah, this, this is totally like, we should be getting a montage of every one of the characters in the game and who plays them. <laughs> Then there's, like, some stock footage from the first game that never actually came out. You know, just like any good sitcom. Well, yeah, that's true. All right, well, we've got we've basically gone around the horn on, on the music here, so let's get into it. And like any good game, we start... In a dingy like alleyway. Game, we start on day one. There we go. Das, just a little early. Das one. Das one. <laughs> and a nice little poem to go with that. I dreamt of blood upon the shore. Oh, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> I dreamt of blood Voice upon acid. the shore of eyes that spoke of sin. Wait, sorry. <laughs> Back in my okay, Ralph, field get out of here. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't Ralph. This is Ralph. I dreamt of blood <laughs> upon the shore of eyes that spoke of sin. The lake was smooth and deep and black and shit. It left the screen. I, I missed it. <laughs> Oh my my word! That's that's a great intro right there. And Leave my check under are. the door. I'm out of here. I bet. Just a minute. <laughs> it lives. I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? Yeah. <laughs> Clearly not. I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. Oh, I mean, he's out. Yeah. Right. If he ever comes back, I'll tell him. <laughs> you know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. But could you? Sure. Though. No. Bye-bye. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, you're lively. <laughs> Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up your karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. That would be it's an interesting body. stretch, I think. <laughs> anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. Ah, uh, yes. Peak, uh, peak technology in 1993, which is actually when this is set I as well. I can't wait to see nice. what human rights you violate with this one. I can't wait to violate them. For example, if you would just let me... Hmm. And I located some local <laughs> and voodoo stop right there. for you. Dixieland <laughs> Drugstore and the Historical <laughs> Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. 
and a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. To prepare for this role, <laughs> Tim Curry gargled crude oil for three weeks straight. <laughs> <laughs> so yes that is uh tim curry trying his best to sound like a native nor new orlander narlander like he's yeah n narlander <laughs> narwhal <laughs> not quite Aww. um he's horny but yeah that's that <laughs> but <-dum -tsh. laughs> uh, <-dum> oh <laughs> just no uh. anyway um so yeah that is tim curry um, treasure that he is, uh, trying his damnedest here, um, and does a, does a reasonably decent job. Every now and again, you're going to hear him slip out of character. Uh, <laughs> it will be Curry very obvious. Him. You'll, you'll hear him be, be his, uh, normal, normal voice every now and again. But, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. there are some other famous names that you'll be hearing as we go through. But for now, we've actually got another one right now. Oh? That's, uh, Leah Romini. Okay. That's, uh, a, not a name I'm familiar with. And oh. Perhaps you'd like to enlighten everyone? Uh, she's just been on a bunch of crap. Like, she's really just more just one of those names I recognize. I'm like, I was like, oh, what do I know her from? And it's like, she was on the King of Queens. And I'm just like, okay, so some random celebrity whose name I've heard before. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm talking, like, big big names we'll see two more at least here um there are, actually no three more i lied Ooh. three more how could i forget the other one um and we'll we'll run into them in due time and two of them will be instant actually no all of them will be instantly recognizable i'm sure the only one that really isn't is tim curry and that's until you get to the part where he slips out of his accent and back into his normal speaking voice is that when he threatens to leave this planet and go to space the <laughs> Not quite. Aw. All right. So the the only issue I really have with this game is that it definitely suffers from uh, adventure game logic, which is basically look at everything, pick up the, everything that's not nailed down, even if you don't know what it's used for. It will be useful later um, kind of deal. That's that's the negative I have with this one. Everything else about it is pretty good. Well, does it have um, uh, so... It doesn't... It, from what I understand, this doesn't have any of those classic Sierra game overstates where, whoops, you forgot to grab the stapler in the bathroom on the first floor. Now, three hours later, you're screwed. Um, I don't believe so. At least... Uh, there is... Actually, no. There is one. There is one ah. thing that you can do that with. But that's at the very end, and you you don't have to backtrack actually very far if you screw it up. Oh, okay. I will not screw it up. Good. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's. I'm pretty sure there's just one of those. No, that no, that uh, King's Quest Five mouse and owl bullshit. Oh yeah, no, or the the custard pie bullshit, <laughs> 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 or everything about King's Quest Five bullshit. <laughs> yeah, the desert, the owl, the oh God, yeah, everything in that game. Less said, less said about that, the better. <laughs> anyway. Let's start with our adventure game logic by looking at all the things. Hooray! Like the newspaper. Today's newspaper is on the counter. And I forgot to mention the best part of this game is the narrator. <laughs> who speaks in a traditional Creole accent, and it's fantastic. Times Picayune, dated June 18, 1993. The front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic, and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Either way, we are not getting involved. <laughs> Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Mm, right. And we have our little points noise because uh, yay points. Also known because as also it's... known as the State Farm jingle. <laughs> yeah, the second half of it. Yep. Um, but 
yeah, uh, so points are a thing because adventure games. Oh, because Sierra games. Well, well, adventure games, period. I mean, well, eh, no. LucasArts didn't do yeah. it. They made fun of it. Yes, they did. <laughs> yeah, that's Saint right. George books could use some serious renovation, but Gabriel likes to think that the place has character. What about this? Cute gargoyle, eh? Or this? Gabriel looks at the cash register, checking for cobwebs. This place has character. Unfortunately, that character is Ray J. Johnson. <laughs> the ladder provides access to the uppermost shelves of the bookcase. St. George books could use some... Now we already heard that. The top shelf contains a set of German books that once belonged to Gabriel's grandfather. Ooh. St. George. No. The ladder. Anything the else ladder in the bookshelf? That shelf contains historical references, biographies of kings and queens, that sort of thing. How about down here? That shelf holds used copies of the Dime Stripe series, <laughs> secrets of unsolved ancient UFO mysteries, and such. Dime Stripe. They just leap out the door. Hey. It sells, I guess. Times and strife. The Times books and on strife. the desk all need Times repair. <laughs> that shelf. I already looked at the historic references. That shelf. The top shelf contains books on animals, including snakes and other reptiles. All right, so we've got some sections up there. It's over Under here. the window are reference books, dictionaries, foreign language dictionaries, quotation books, and others. Gabriel. Borrows them often when he writes. <laughs> Plagiarized from the dictionary. <laughs> Only cowards use dictionaries. <laughs> Blessed caffeine. Damn right. Just yes. not from coffee, because coffee's <laughs> gross. <laughs> Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. Well, what a lovely. wacky, offbeat kind of guy that it was. Took him his whole career to get the three snakes. <laughs> Before then, he could only manage two, two and a half tops. All right, we looked at most of everything that's important right now. So let's start picking things up Yay. that clearly are in uh, slightly higher quality, or rendered in slightly higher quality than everything yeah, around I it. I cannot see any way to pick that up. <laughs> Lies. You just have Lies. to sit there and wonder why on earth. <laughs> You can't get ye flask. Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. No problem. And the tweezers? I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. Just trying to make you feel at home. At least I'm not a nerf herder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, again, adventure game logic dictates that we pick up everything we can. If it's not nailed because... down, it goes in our pockets. Uh-huh. Let's take a look at the cast register, shall we? Or open it up, rather. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the tape. Or, in the case of St. George Books, the miss tape. Ha. Did it. Sweet. Nuts and berries. <laughs> Gabriel, that's all the change money I have. Touch it, and you could kiss your hand goodbye. Would I do that to you? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you would. Can I take this thing? I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. Sure. There's nothing else we can take here, so let's take a look in the back. It's a cozy place. Hey, he's got a big purple head. Mardi Gras mementos left by some female or other. So somebody brought a giant purple head over to your place, <laughs> and you don't remember who it was. Well, I think that's what the other is here. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the wastebasket overflows with Crumpled pages of mediocre glory. Ouch. 
the typewriter is beginning to accumulate cobwebs. Should I feel guilty? Nah. <laughs> Several dozen books, including a few of Gabriel's novels, occupy the shelves above his desk. We have a phone. The desk phone is cheap, but functional. As Clearly, desk, since it's... As a desk phone should be. Yeah. Since it's rendered in higher quality, we'll eventually use that later, but not now. The medicine cabinet contains a few old prescriptions, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products, including some hair gel. Well, since it's mentioned specifically, yeah, it sounds like you're gonna. It means we that. should take it. Yeah, we won't know where, but Adventure I'll Game Logic dictates that I take it. You never know when you'll need a touch up. Again. Might as well leave that here. Again, Tim Curry trying his damnedest. <laughs> Doing the best he can, all right? Yep. Gabriel, shut the refrigerator, please. I can smell it from here. Women. <laughs> Expecting you to keep refrigerators plugged in and the lack? I don't understand. So. <laughs> Jeans and t-shirts. Simple wardrobe. Gabriel's robe hangs on the wall. It's a bit hot for it in June, though. The dresser holds a meager supply of underwear and 38 pairs of mismatched socks. If they take some talent. If they're mismatched, then how are they pairs? Well, maybe they just go together. Who knows? Chocolate and it's peanut Gabriel's butter. Gabriel's bed. Yep. Unmade, as usual. A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. Woo. Well, well, we've done everything we can here, so let's go back out front. And since we have some books from our grandfather, let's take a look. Because adventure game logic. Sure. They were mentioned specifically, so... Gabriel selects a volume of German poetry that he always found strangely compelling. Drei Drachen. Drei Drachen kriechen in meinen Schlaf. Die Ziele wollen sie lebendig zum Pras. Feurigen Atems, gespeltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kind of creepy, though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling the guy was one sick puppy. Based on the fact that he spoke German and all. Oh, come on. I speak German. Kinda. <laughs> Point made. And... Ugh. Ouch. <laughs> well, at least in, in the game world, we don't quite know what that means. I know what that means, but... We can look. Gabriel leaves through a German English dictionary. Let's see, mid tag means midday noon. Or look up useless words that are Gabriel not in the poem. Leaves through a German well, English not useless, dictionary. but. Spiel means game. Interesting. Let's try again. Gabriel leaves through a German English dictionary. Himmel means heaven. Uh huh. Gabriel leaves through a Maybe German more? English dictionary. Dry means three. All right. Well, that's at Gabriel least one word in the poem. A German Ooh. English dictionary. Possessen means possessed. That's handy to know. Comes up in everyday conversation. <laughs> ah yes. Gabriel leaves through a German English dictionary. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know he was being insulted if I called him Drachenbread. Gabriel leaves through a there German are a couple more. English dictionary. Let's see, nope. mid tag means midday noon. So if you were unaware of the title of that poem, Dry Drachen means three dragons. Hmm. Um, uh, I will hold off on the actual train. Oh, no, I'll, I can. No, don't look at it. 
Um, the actual translation of the entire poem is, the three dragons creep into my sleep. The spirit wanting life is in, uh, in its repast. Fiery breaths, flicking tongues, relishing every meal. Hmm. Which is, yeah, lovely. That won't be important in any way, shape, or form later on. <laughs> the history books on that shelf don't interest Gabriel at the moment. Well, how about this shelf? The history book. Or this shelf. Oh, we can look at that shelf. Gabriel pulls down a book on snakes. Snakes are legless reptiles. Some snakes kill their prey with poison. Some by constriction. It's venom. The snake smells by tasting the air with its forked tongue. The smells are passed back to a sense organ in the mouth. Constrictor snakes, however, sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that many of the legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters, well, they've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. <coughs> And that's interesting that we just read a poem about three dragons. Mm -hmm. So we have some connections, and we have a painting of three snakes. Or was it three skulls? Three snakes. Three, yep, three in snakes in the skull. What a wacky. So we're sensing a theme here right off the bat. But uh, let's do the other thing we need to do in adventure games is talk to everyone about everything. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Now we get to listen to more of Tim Curry trying his damnedest. Hooray. What can you tell me about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop, the museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. I'll be fine. Nothing bad will happen. Yeah, of course not. Do you know anything else about voodoo? I've told you all I know. Sorry, I can't be more help. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. What do you know about the voodoo murders? You won't get far questioning me about it, Sherlock. Now, I didn't mention this, uh, but we have two, cat like, two uh, categories of topics. We have ones that we can ask everybody, which are the ones in some kind of gray, whether it's a darker or lighter gray. It's like jeans. And then we blue. have the ones <laughs> that are unique to the person we're talking to, which are in a different color. Not always red, but in this particular case, they are. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. No, that's a zombo call. <laughs> Anything is possible. Anything. Anything. <laughs> what else can you tell me about New Orleans? You're the native. Don't ask me. Well, geez. Let's ask Do you messages. have messages for me? Dana called. And uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Toss him. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Do you have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace. Don't worry. <laughs> I didn't go into detail about your cardinal <laughs> sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. But she said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm. Okay. And points, because that's important. Do you have more messages for me? Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Style 101032 well, something. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American 1 authors. 1-800-COLLECT. Does that work for international <laughs> calls? Uh, maybe. Do you have more messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talking of visiting. Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. 
Oh, that's H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station, at the front desk. It's about time. Gabriel, those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Nope. Now, why would why? you say no. something like that? <laughs> because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new voodoo book? Yeah, I have a the privilege to get that information. There you go. Readers, you know. <laughs> Gabriel, you know you never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're going to be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... That's enough. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, wow. that's all the messages. Why do you care? Oh, God. <laughs> Sounds like an inconvenience. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. All right, right, let's get into the. Yeah, right, Knight. I mean it. The big what do you topic know? here, because there are a lot of things to talk about. Oh boy. How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, really. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. What do you do after work? Well, I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. <laughs> Don't know if you know what the word atrophy means. <laughs> How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Ouch. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. <coughs> uh, I, can, I can see. I'm trying to figure out the math on that. I can't. It's, uh, K through 12 is 13. 13. And then five more years. So she got a, a bachelor's and a master's in five years. Eh, I mean, it's doable. I know people that do programs like that. I didn't know that was a thing in 1993. <laughs> hmm. Just tell me anything at all. I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it and I thought... You know, spending a few months here would clear my head. I think you went to the wrong place to clear your head. <laughs> Just tell me anything at all. I've always wanted to do something really adventurous, you know? Something real life. I'm sick of libraries and lecture halls. That's why I work in a bookstore. <laughs> Just tell me anything at all. My folks are traditional Japanese. I don't even remember Japan myself. I was three when we came to the States. Just tell me anything at all. I've been studying Tai Chi for 10 years. It's a very spiritual discipline. I'm sure discipline of any sort isn't something that would appeal to you, Gabriel. Eh, I don't know about that. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, trying to not get sued here. <laughs> Just tell me anything at all. My folks want me to get married to a boy back east. Mark Kobayashi. His parents are traditional Japanese, too. <laughs> I might eventually, but right now... The most traditional of Japanese names, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Just tell me anything at all. I've always wanted to do something... All right, we heard of that. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Goodbye. Suit yourself. Yep, and we talked about everything else. We don't have any research to request, so... Now, there are two different talk functions here. So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. Just gotta use the, the imaginary... The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. See, there it is. Ah, ah. <laughs> well, she said it, not him, so... <laughs> Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? Be still, my heart. <laughs> Had any customers lately? Uh, no, but I'm sure you have. 
Yikes. Or fern? <laughs> Somebody's uh, a little too into her business, I think. You know, you really should get out more. But then who'd take care of St. George's? Or me. Exactly. You know, now, it, it, I should point out oh, that in this done scene... done anything that, interesting lately? It seems like... By your definition? No. <clears throat> I prefer it that way. It's, it seems like this is a perspective trick, but I actually think those are just some real huge friggin' books that they have in here. <laughs> These, this is the big books. They're the large print editions. <laughs> ah, there you go. All right, there's really not much else to do right now, so let's go do some other stuff because I'm sure you're sick of staring at this interior. Let's go stare at some See other you later. ones. Don't hurry back on my account. All right, well, we had a couple places to go. We could go visit our grandmother. We could go to the police station and get those pictures. Or we could just go some other random places, like there's a uh, couple places that Grace found for us, the historical voodoo museum here and the Dixieland drug store. We have those couple <laughs> options. Dixieland drug and voodoo, apparently. Uh, yeah, it's it's not that kind of drugstore. <laughs> oh. Oh, indeed. Uh, and then we have a couple other places. Uh, uh, St. Louis Cathedral, which is in Jackson Square. We have Jackson Square itself. We have an overlook to Jackson Square. A lot of Jackson Square stuff going on. And then the Napoleon House. Oh, boy. And then St. George's Books, where we just came from. So, there are a lot of places we can go. Where's the Zool building? But... What's that? Where's the Zool building? <laughs> it's not appearing in this game. Aww. <laughs> well, let's go and visit our grandmother. Get this awesome five-second FMV riding away. All right, so now I can expense this motorcycle on the company account. <laughs> Job well done. I'm so glad you It's a work expense. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. I need it for three seconds of FMV footage. Not at all. <laughs> Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. Well, since we have the opportunity, let's take a look around. Underwala portraits of Gran and Grams when they were young. Gabriel's inherited some good-looking jeans. He hasn't washed them in years. <laughs> Aren't you just not supposed to wash jeans, period, or something? Uh, they say that, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I could not tell you I, either. The sofa has a worn blue chintz pattern that Gabriel remembers fondly. The sofa... I already heard that. Granny has a way with plants and kids. The double doors lead to Granny's front lawn. What else is around? Granny's knitting. She whips through that stuff like there was no tomorrow. Well, when you're that old, there might not be. The wood in the bin is sudden pine and is probably fossilized by now. Grandmother Knight rarely uses the fireplace these days. Too much of a hassle to clean. Well, yeah, what with the giant bronze shell in there? <laughs> Maybe that's the NBC Mostly logo, I'm not sure. Gabriel, his dad, and Harrison Knight. <laughs> Mostly pictures of G I already heard that. Fresh carnations. Granny's favorite. And soon to be in flames. Yep. Granny likes soft lighting. <laughs> soft, flammable lighting. <laughs> the stairs lead up to the attic. Which we'll go up to shortly. That clock has been in the right family, Granny's family, for centuries. Let's hope it's got the right time. Uh, oh, sorry. You're that's fired. Brain. Adorable. As okay, I'll be over, folks. Such a tease. See y'all later. <laughs> it's been a good run. This <laughs> All right, let's actually How you been, Grandma? Have a chat. Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work, but I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. 
All right, anytime. I need you to go through the attic through your father's stairs. <laughs> Are you okay, Gran? I'm right as rain, boy. Is there anything you need? Me? Oh, no, no. I'm just fine, Gabriel. I have more than enough of everything. Need a new kidney, but I keep a fresh one in the basement. <laughs> Are you okay, Grant? And right. yeah, all right. So do that in the correct order, because you're generally supposed to start with that, since that really doesn't get you info. Can we talk, Grant? Mm. It's just course, kind of pleasantries. How can I help? Not that it has any bearing on anything else, but whatever. All right, so let's ask some random stuff. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. Yep, all those 1993 worries. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Oh, Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. <laughs> I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. I see she hasn't grown up in the generation of watching crime shows on TV all day. <laughs> no, that comes much, much later. <laughs> bah. I mean, unless you call, uh, unless you count, like, Unsolved Mysteries or something like that. Aw, oh, now you're making me miss Robert Stack. Aw. Oh. Womp womp. I mean, I can I can hear the theme music still in my head, which is kind of. You know they have. I don't a, know if that's good or not. Well, actually, they have a new unsolved mysteries. Oh, I know. One of them is actually close to where I live. And they completely ruined the theme song. Oh, I know. They took the jam drums. I'm aware out. of that too. What the hell? <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Yes, one of them is. One of the actually, I think it's the very first one is about a unsolved mystery in Baltimore, where I am currently at. Nice. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern, of course, though not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. That, Still, that good, it hasn't changed good as much California as other places, stuff. I reckon. <laughs> We've always been happy here. So, of course, you know, this exists so that you as the player can learn things that I'm sure Gabriel already knows as a character who has lived here his entire life. Ah, what exposition. Can you tell me about New Orleans? Yep. My the exposition. Boy, you what a here show. You've your life just like me. I can't tell you much that you don't already know. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the stuff that we can tell just specifically ask her. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Graham. I'm really bored. All right, dear. <laughs> what do you want to hear? I need to learn stuff so I can do more things. What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden. I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. You put those hills in three months ago. <laughs> There's not a lot of hills in, in New Orleans. It's below sea level. <laughs> Tell me about the fall you met, Granddad. It's just around it, basically. You know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. We grew peas, corn, cotton, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood. But my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Tell me how you met Granddaddy. I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then, a big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan, Come to me to find your way. So much your of a slogan. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma. And at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fryer and brimstone antics. His hair really just stay on your head. His hair naturally <laughs> on fire as he does this. Flying off. <laughs> I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew that he was for me. Man, dating sure was weird back then. 
How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was twenty. Anything at all. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather, and I never will. Just tell me anything at all. I hate to admit it, but I was a jealous. Oh, sorry. Oh no. Just tell me anything <laughs> at all. I get lonely sometimes, but I have lots of girlfriends in the neighborhood. I call one of them if I'm feeling blue. Oh, I got a I got a magical solution for you, Grandma. Have you ever heard of cats? <laughs> you can use you about musical? you can use about twelve to fourteen of them. I wish you'd settle down and give me a great grandchild. Oh, grand! I brought you some cats. You mean like the musical? No, those kind of cats. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was twenty-two. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Hi, looping. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved. Yes, I am looping. Okay. Oh, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. Let's some learn some more about our family. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? We'll start with granddad. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. I'll tell you what, though. He hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Wanted a book Maybe burning. That was why he had the worst luck with jobs. But that's book, well, to tell me book taking another. is also fun. <laughs> and I would tell him it didn't matter to me, but he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Tell me something about Granddad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your Granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. Took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. I know you are, dear. Now, the last time I, I... Well, I mean, things might have been different back then, but streetcars don't move very fast. No! What was he doing? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Get out of the way. Ding, ding, ding. No! <laughs> Tell me something about Granddad. Did you know that your Granddad was a poet? He was! He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift. But he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. Well, I'm sure it's a bigger, uh, much bigger, uh, much better than uh, the poem we read earlier. <laughs> Tell me something about Granddad. I don't know what else to... Man, I hope that's not the kind of poetry we're talking about here. <laughs> mm. And it's in German. Maybe... <laughs> No. <laughs> maybe, maybe she just didn't understand German. <laughs> Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Why do you sound excited about that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and just like we do. Coincidence, that. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> granddad's blush that explains the about my fashion cheeks. <laughs> Just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. 
So the key is to not have children, and if you do, uh, get into, like, a padded room before they turn eight. <laughs> Since that seems to be the theme here, is the, the father dies when the kid is eight. <laughs> Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. But wait, wasn't he was pushing him to go to law school when he was eight? <laughs> I guess. There's some timeline concerns here. <laughs> Tell me about my father. He always hated it that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him, try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two. But he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. Yeah, we know. We've already seen it. It's hanging up in our bookstore. Tell me about my father. I don't know what else to do. And that's the end of that. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course, but I also think she liked the finer family. Since you're so interested in family Point. history these days, yep. why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. Sweet. So now we have a new location. Grave Tell Robin. My mother. Yep. Your mother's family refused well, to give quite, her but... money after Grave the Grave borrowing. All she had left was a modest <laughs> trust fund from a great aunt who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Stuff that we should know as a character but don't know as a player. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. They never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. I believe that's Tell me it. about my mother. I don't know. Yep. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> Not that there's really a point to Have this. Have you baked any of your incredible molasses pies lately? <laughs> no, dear. But you let me know when you want some. <sighs> And I'll whip up half a dozen. <laughs> You're oh, right over there. Oh, that just. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'd like a bowl a, full of melted sugar, thank you. <laughs> Not a fan of molasses pies, eh? <sighs> just. Uh, <laughs> I like sweets, and that sounds like it's gonna hurt. <laughs> You've lost weight. Are you caught in a new man? Oh, Gabriel, don't be silly. You know there'll never be anyone but your granddad for me. Your hair looks very pretty today, Gran. Well, oh my, thank you, dear. So does... Um, you always had such nice, thick hair, Gabriel. Thank you. Nice it's... way to steer away from that. <laughs> Th thank you. It's this hair gel I've been carrying around for no reason. <laughs> you know, I always tell people that my Gran is the prettiest grand old bell in the city. Oh dear, you shouldn't talk so. I believe that is the last one. You know? Yep. Alright, well, let's actually do what we came here to do and go and look at the stuff. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. Specifically, our father's stuff. But we'll look at other things while we're here. Like this horse collar. That must have been the year Granddaddy caught Santa on the roof. Oh, those are antlers. These old picture frames have been up here for years. How about you? It's an old, dusty bicycle tire. Hey. Just randomly stuck on the wall. Why not? Grandma's attic is a storehouse of forgotten treasures and useless junk. Gabriel has seen these ornaments every year at Christmas for as long as he can remember. It's a lady's hat from the 1920s. Or a from Grand's Virginia Woolf period. Looks more like a pilgrim's hat from the 1680s. <laughs> Just they bash the brim in, brim in a lot. 
A little bit, yeah. Yeah. That tennis racket probably hasn't served a ball since the forties. I'm sorry, the when? <laughs> it's best not to think about it. <laughs> Beans were popular Grandma's back then. <laughs> Grandma. All right, there's nothing there. How about here? Grandma. No. Curtains? The old velvet curtains hung in the parlor before Grand lightened up the place. She lit up the place. The brass, <laughs> the brass bed frame is from God knows where. Oh, and now there's also a gremlin. I see him. Gremlin. A skylight lets welcome sunlight into the attic. That's not a gremlin. That is a An gremlin. An elaborate mechanical clock. It's a clock. Probably of German origin. Of course it's from Germany. It Everything else has been from Germany. Treasures of the attic. Look. It doesn't seem to be running at the moment. It's a clock in the shape of a gremlin, clearly. <laughs> that box of knickknacks has been up there for at least five years. Well, I need to find the box of patty wax to go with it. Grandma's attic is a... No, nothing there. How about you? There's a sketchbook on the chair that Gabriel vaguely remembers as his father's. Well, we're supposed to go through his stuff, so... Why not? I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. Well, since we haven't done it yet, let's look at our inventory. The tweezers from the bookshop are an old stainless steel pair that Gabriel's had forever. The magnifying glass is an expensive one with an inlaid jade handle, an heirloom from Gabriel's grandfather. Expensive magnifying glass, okay. The $20 gift certificate for St. George's looks pitifully new and unused. Oh, poor gift certificate. Nobody loves you, gift certificate. Gabriel looks fondly at his father's sketchbook and charcoal pencil. That is an old-ass pencil. The jar con yeah. The jar contains frou-frou hair gel. <laughs> Yeah, it looks kind of sparkly, well, frankly. This, well, let's take a look in the sketchbook. Well, then. Got some points. Yeah, and uh, got some nightmares. <laughs> Yeesh. Yeah, these actually look like some of the uh, some of the runes you find in La Mulana. <laughs> so this is going to tell you where to jump down a pit like three hours from now. That's... <laughs> Well, there are a bunch of symbols here, so we've got whatever the hell this thing is. This three snakes motif seems to be popular. And a pineapple ring. Three, three rings, and then this ring within a ring. The pineapple. That three rings. <laughs> That's over here. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> that three rings is over here again. Looks like a lion's face. Some kind of metal or medallion something. Looking thing, I don't know. And a tiger fire. And a tiger. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook, the way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep card in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Well, those must be some fun dreams. Mm. Anything else? Do we can we look at things specifically? Images hot. The images touch a. No, we cannot. Okay. Well, let's close that. Uh, not really anything else we can do. Gabriel doesn't want to open that jar until he's ready to use the hair gel. Aww. It will get all over everything. Well, maybe I want to put it all over everything. You think about that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, since the clock is better rendered than everything else around it, let's have a, a closer look. Or operate it, maybe? Yes, operate it. So, we've got a little a key. A key winds the clock's mechanism. Oh, that's an ugly-looking gremlin. There's an interesting design in the base of the clock. Got this down here. Hmm. No, not no, not exit. <laughs> Got too close to the edge. Yeah, I'll just look at the overall. An elaborate mechanic. Okay, it that's doesn't just... seem 
That's just what it told us that uh, before. It's the minute hand. So we can obviously. The face of the clock is hand painted. Look at the hands. You know what? A ring of six symbols surround the face of the clock. A sword, a sun, an angel, a noose, an eclipse, and a dragon. Of course. I thought that was a spoon. <laughs> no, that's so. Starting from here, sword, sun. Angel, noose, eclipse, dragon. So it just basically went uh, clockwise around around the face as it is right now. Now this is one of the kind of like stupid puzzles in here because it doesn't really give you a whole lot to go from, other than that poem we had earlier, where we uh, only know really in the game world, dry draken, which means three dragons. Hmm. Now we can. Evil doesn't want. No, not take. The ring of symbols. The. The ring of symbols. There we go. We can rotate the symbols. And then we're able to rotate the hands as well. So we're talking about three. Dragons. Let's set the clock to... Three o'clock in dragon time? Three dragons. Yep, yeah, three three o'clock in dragon time. Sure. I don't know why my... Touchpad is now... Uh, spazzing out on me. <laughs> it, it, it's like... it's It wants to drift. I don't know why. I'm a little oversensitive at the moment. <laughs> the face of the clock doesn't move. I know that. Let me get the hand... Yeah, it's my touchpad is being very weird right now. Almost got it. No. Yeah, overshot. I got it. I got it. no, 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 no. Damn it. <laughs> yep, got it. <on. laughs> yeah, I have no idea what's happening right now with my touchpad. Try it doesn't make any sense. I almost had it. Well, I need to wind it back oh. to. I was too far. I, uh, come I do on. not know. I do not know why my touchpad is freaking out. I want to set it to three. Let me set it to three, you stupid clock. Yes. There okay. we go. Okay, and then. Ooh. Granddaddy, you Do -do -do. Old fox. Yeah, so that's this is one of the dumber puzzles in this in this one. <laughs> so <laughs> because it's not it it's not terribly intuitive. I mean, you kind of there's a little bit of abstract logic involved because like initially, if you think about it, you're like three dragons. Okay, let's set the dragon over here, and then maybe you set the three clock. You turn the handle, nothing happens. So then it's like, okay, well now what? Because that's your only guiding clue is three dragons. What that actually means is, you know, this. Three and Three dragons. of dragons, yes. Anyway, let's see what's inside. We've got a letter. And a picture. Hmm. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter. Whoever that is. It's that dude who wrote that poem. The letter is written in German, but Gabriel determines what he can about it. Which is probably nothing. It was sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of quill tip, bold strokes, and underlining. Hmm. So there was a, there was a lot there. Um, just in case you are unfamiliar with the German that's here, which is, is kind of common, but I can understand if people are not. 
Uh, we have Schloss Ritter, which is castle. Uh, Schloss is castle, Ritter, and Rittersburg, which I don't understand why they went with this. West Germany? <laughs> why they're calling it West Germany in this particular game. It is 1993. Uh, the Berlin Wall has been down already for four years in game time, I believe. <laughs> mm. Um... Mein Sohn, mein son, uh, my son. Um, the letter. It was Ritter, my the son. Wilhelm Ritter, son. yes. One Schwarzenegger. The the uh, I'm not going to say what that is yet. Um, you might know one word it's in a, Schwarzenegger. It's a something hunter. Yeah, exactly. It's so a shit hunter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. No, that'd be that'd be um, that'd but... be Scheisen, Scheisen Jaeger. <laughs> Scheisen Jaeger, something maybe? like that. Uh, Sh Sh uh, Scheisen Jaeger, maybe. I think it's. I think. It, hmm. I don't know. I don't know the conjugation on that one. I'll buy it <laughs> right off the top of my head. Um, the little known rip off of Base Hunter. <laughs> but yes, uh, Jaeger is Hunter, which. Um, you know, you've probably seen in a bunch of places, um, you know, giant mechs, boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple kinds um, of but, boobs. Yeah. Pff, boobs I'd like to kind of not remember, actually. <laughs> that Baron Jaeger's pretty good. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say it's bad, but for me, it's it's tied to not great times. We'll just put it that way. I don't know. If, if you've never had Baron Jaeger, Baron Jaeger's totally different. Baron, uh, I have not. Baron Jaeger's a honey liqueur. Interesting. Because it's Bear Hunter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although it'd be Baron Jaeger at that point. I think it was Baron Jaeger, believe. yeah. Yeah, unless there's an umlaut over the A. I'm not really sure. Anyway, we can move that clock and look in the chest. It looks pretty heavy. No, don't pick it up. This is the, the one frustrating thing about this is that we don't have... A kind of a catch-all use button. Yeah, a nice handy verb menu would be nice. Something like that. The trunk contains What's inside? some old clothes, including a pair of leather shorts. Aren't those called lederhosen? Serious hiking boots. More of Harrison Knight German book. Just what I need. Ah. And a bundle of letters. Love letters between Harrison and Rebecca. In German. Probably in German, yes. Uh, can we take them? I don't think there's anything in that trunk that would interest anybody but my grand. Oh, but what about the what about well, the what about the German books? Then we'll close it. I believe we got what we need here, which was this letter and this picture. It's the three dragons. The old photographs show Gabriel's <laughs> grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. Anything else to look at in the here? Old photo no, just the picture overall. Is there anything on the back? The back of the photo has the following written on it. Schloss Ritter, 1925. All right, interesting. Well... This seems like a good place to leave off for right now. Wait a minute, I'm trying so... to do my math again. Okay. Don't hurt yourself. So... <sighs> <sighs> but... <laughs> so he was in his 30s when he got hit by a trolley. But then Gabriel's yes. dad was in his 30s when he got in a car accident. And yet somehow between him being an adult in 1925 and 1993 now. Now I guess I guess that makes sense because Gabriel grew up, but I don't know. I feel like Well, these... there might be pieces there might be pieces of the puzzle that we are currently missing. That's probably true. These timelines don't add so, up. Yes. Let's <laughs> let's not, not get too ahead of ourselves here, but um Sorry, I've already as got the was... out. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this seems like a good place to stop and let Doogie do his math, so yeah. uh, we'll call it for now and join us next time where we pick up more of Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Father. Carry the three.
carry the three. See ya. Bye.